everybody. You can see the sun is out. <laughs> it's shining. Yay. Um, can you believe that mess that was in, uh, was it in D.C.? Whoa, that was horrifying. I saw somewhere on the news today, um, like the seven things you should have in your car all the time. I didn't read it, but I'm going to read it. And I'm going to take advantage of that information because, wow, wow. All right. So I am looking for comments. I, I see John is in here sneaking around. Okay. D John, don't worry about it. No, it's sunny. Don't worry about it. Okay, so I'm very excited that I got to do a uh, interview with Irene Blank, our BOM person for this year. So I'm very excited about that. And it runs a little long, so I'm going to zip through a lot of this in the beginning. However, one of you asked Monday, could John please get a better res up on the site? And he said, yes, he would. And he did. But it's not at the block of the month area because you can't get it in there in all those close-ups. So number one, if you're in today's newsletter, click through. It'll take you right where you need to be. Number two, if you are want to search for it, go to, um, what is it, gallery, John? Sea quilts. Sea quilts. Sea quilts. And he got, there are some just rock star um, high reses in there. Like he's trying to make it better right now. <laughs> Sandy, hi. We were going to come up to Groveland um, for the uh, New Year's Eve, and then we just decided we couldn't deal with the snow. Okay, so a couple other things. Uh, somebody wrote me Bonnie to be, in fact, to show me some Brazilian applique, or I'm sorry, embroidery that she had on a sweatshirt or did on a sweatshirt. I don't even know. And then she wrote me back more information today about Brazilian um, embroidery. And I thought, okay, I've got to, what is it? Oh, and the threads that you use. Okay, what makes the threads so different? Well, number one, she said it comes in three different sizes, and and what it is, is it's rayon. So it has a sheen to it that our cottons do not. Now, she said it's not like um, our thread that when we go and get a skein and split it, kind of like the thread we're using, you can't split it, and so you just need to get the appropriate size. So honestly, Bonnie, I'd never heard of Brazilian um, embroidery. I wonder if you guys have two. Seriously. All right. Then I went through uh, the gallery and I grabbed a couple pictures of what you're doing. And as I always say when we're, thanks John, that's it. When we're in a project, I feel humbled by what you are posting. And I just feel lucky that I get to be the uh, carrier pigeon and all this stuff because we are a talented group of people here. Just, if you ask me, just saying. So here is Pam's and I want to know what's going on with that circle there. Is that like velvet that you've put on top? I, I think so because then down that yellow, if you go down towards the bottom, it looks as if there's another velvet that's been put down. But I just love the fanciful way you guys are picking stitches, doing stitches. Some are very simple. Some of you have just gone cuckoo with it. And I love every single bit about it. And by the way, Deborah, that W is just exquisite. Didn't even occur to me to put um, a alphabet a letter on my quilt, like an A. How, why would I do an A? I got to think about that. <laughs> then this is Carol's. Oh, and I want to say I didn't put everybody's up because some of the reses just did not come through resolution, I mean. And so you could go to the forum and look at the pictures that people are doing, and it's amazing. But I got to tell you what caught me on this, Carol, was Mr. Snail. <laughs> and in a sense, this is very very Sue Spargo-ish, 
where you go and you, you know, put on like wool or whatever and then have at it. So that bottom right one, I forget what it's called. I know you're hooked on it. Wendy's hooked on it, my friend. I have yet to truly figure that one out to get it right. Okay. And then Rose actually was like, eh, I don't want to do this. I don't know. Am I doing a good impression, Rose? Yeah, I don't know. And then she started doing it and now she's hooked. <laughs> that's the secret of the whole game. And that's why you have to bring people into the fold to help grow our community. So Rose, I reeled you in. And then this is Chris's. And this is a little blurry, but I wanted to show it because that original um, slash across it now has been, it was very um, stark, not good, not bad, but stark. And you can see how the embroidery on top of it just starts to really hammer things back and bring things down. And that's what I'm finding on my pastel one. And then, okay, Kathy, Kathy. I'm glad you got the ribbon. <laughs> this is the picture she sent me. <laughs> yeah, first place. <laughs> look at those, you guys. Just look at how full it is, how things are overlapped and underlapped, et cetera, et cetera. It's fabulous. Congratulations. That's just fabulous, Kathy. And I, I, I tell, again, I had to laugh again when I looked at this. It's just adorable. So let's go hang out with Irene. And what was so weird about this, um, Irene Blank from Down Under, I was on one day and she was on the other the next day. Well, let's just take a look. Okay. I'm here with Irene Blank and I couldn't be happier. Hi, Irene. Hi, how are you? It is in the morning in Australia, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. It's about 10 a.m. and it's a pretty miserable day today. Well, here it's about 3 p.m. and I hope it stays miserable because we need the rain. Um, <laughs> first of all, I want to thank you for being our TQS Designer 2022. Um, it has just been received like unbelievably uh, I, I this quilt behind me is just amazing so thank you you know um i have to say when i was asked to do it i was so nervous and i thought oh i don't know if i can and then lilo said we wouldn't ask you if we didn't think you could so that kind of gave me some confidence oh yeah. and as soon as i finished talking to her i drew something up and i pretty much stuck to that so I was you know i think i remember that i mean we had something yeah. in our hot little hands right away right yeah 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 so so yeah. you've made a lot of block of the months right yeah, yeah. I, I do I, one every year is it pretty much for who, who for kathy for what no, 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 just for myself. Um, and then people, shops will say, can they have them? So, yeah. So, but I don't do fabric measurements. That's where with the with this quilt, I had to write everything down. Sorry. Which is a challenge. Sorry. Well, and I have to tell you, the kit uh, that Chris and pulled together is spectacular. Um, I can't mm -hmm. wait to see what comes from it. And I love the fact that nobody's quilt is going to look the same. Nobody's because yeah. you can mix and match and do what you want. Now, a lot of this quilt was done from your stash, right? The whole thing was done for my stash. Yes. Okay. So I think Kristen went to 10 different manufacturers to pull this together. <laughs> and, and I think she did a bang up job. I think the only thing that's going to be a little different is the background that she's, that she could secure is a little bit lighter. But it, I mean, it's but it's it's got the Aussie look yeah. to it. I mean, you guys yeah. really have a way of it. Mm -hmm. Let's, we do. You do. Let's take a look at some of your other quilts, and then I want to get back to this one and talk about um, how you came up with the idea and all that good stuff and challenges mm -hmm. and all that. All right. So here, tell us about this one, please. Uh, this was my the the last one I did was in full bloom. Um, and, you know, when I teach, I like to say it's so easy to design. I just have a graph paper, I draw squares, and then I just do fillers. So 
Um, you know, I just believe that's the way I do it. And for me, it's pretty easy. There's one particular thing about this quilt I like, and that's the label is on the front. Oh, where? Um, oh, yeah, there it is, right smack yeah. in the center. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, now, your stuff is pretty much needle turned, right? That's right. Yeah. Yes, it is. And did, okay, I get, I, did you do all this or did you have busy bees help you out? I had busy bees because of the deadline, you know, by the time we couldn't get fabric for starters. And by the time we decided to do it with my fabric, we were pretty much close to the deadline. So I had to get some friends to help. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Let's take a look at this one. Okay. And I note that you're, you're, oh, by the way, I want to mention, these are all patterns that are available on your website, correct? Yes, they okay. are. Yes. This one is called Potty MacDotty <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, naming quilts is really difficult. And um, those were pots for me, you know, vases. Um, so I just call it Potty MacDotty. And that was a block of a month a couple of years ago. Um, it's just something I like doing. <laughs> well, I, I love those polka dots because it gives a playfulness that is just incredible. All right, yeah. let's take another one. I, I had fun surfing your site, by the way. <laughs> Oof. Oh, this one is such a surprise because it's virtually a, a one block quilt. Um, so the block is a six inch block and uh, I decided to put the background to make the background four different colors. So I, I did one and I thought, oh, you look really sweet. Let's do two, which look better. Let's do four, which really looked awesome. And then I did 36 more to make up the quilt. Um, and it's just it's just fabric that really brings this quilt to life. Um, yeah, so, I teach you when I, in, oh, yes, sorry. I'm sorry. So what so you're telling me that the four patch is six inches finished or the no. No, each block is six inches, so the full patch will be 12 inch finished. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, I teach this in a Zoom class, and um, I didn't realize when I did it, but each block has got all the techniques to learn a, for needle turn. So it's a terrific class to uh, take. You learn all the techniques. So you're saying you're doing this on Zoom also, besides lectures? Yeah, yeah. I've got four workshops that I do on Zoom. Oh, so. Let's say all of a sudden I'm watching this and I'm going, I want to take that class. I go mm -hmm. to your website and then what do I do? Uh, well, at the moment, I'm, I'm in between switching websites, so oh. I haven't got that. But people can just email me and I organize classes either through my by myself or a lot of guilds in America contact me and I do them through the guilds. Okay. Um, so I'll give a lecture and then I'll do a workshop with the guild. What about the time difference? How do you, how does that work out? Or are you pretty much just staying in Australia? Uh, yeah, uh, usually in America, they do it in the evenings. So oh. probably between about, you know, three o'clock to, to eight o'clock. Yeah. yeah, so it's a three hour workshop. Yeah. And for me, that's the morning. So we work that out. Perfect. Oh, wait, that's that one. Um, this one just, I oh. love <laughs> it. Yeah, well, this one, uh, you know, um, I had done a, a quilt like this before, but it wasn't as complex as this. So this one, I decided to do it in grays, which I love because you can put really bright colors on gray. And because the center was so structured, I decided to do a really lush border. And so I just went crazy with the border and did as much as I could on it. Um, and you know, I love birds. So there is the obligatory bird in the border. There's just one bird there. I see. The border. Um, I see. Oh, wait, there's, <laughs> wait, no, but there's four in total, right? Yeah. Yeah. One on each side. Yeah. yeah. So um, when you're doing this, do you, because this border just kills me. I love it. I'm assuming that you do the applique on it, attach it, and then do the corners. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. So the, the way I teach as well is that I ask you to prepare a whole quilt. So in other words, you know, each border would have had everything glued on. So you, then it's portable. You can take it around with you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. So everything is done. And then, um, you know, the um, two borders are sewn to the side and then the corners are sewn to the remaining borders and then that's sewn on. Mm -hmm. And then you hide like under a leaf or something where it attaches. That's what my trick yes. is. 
Okay. Yeah. 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 And then, and then, okay. what kind of a thread do you? I'm getting technical here, just because I mean your work is so astonishing. Um, do you use silk thread or like a? a... No, I I've been using Wonderful um, sixty weight. Okay. And basically, I only use two colors, and I use like a, a beige and a tan. Um, I don't have any of the, you know, red, blues, greens. I don't have any of those colors in my um, st in my sewing kit. Mm -hmm. I only use two colors. And for me, that's pretty much all I need. And I believe that's what we did in the kit, too. Yes, yes. Okay, just... <laughs> um, this one is bird's eye view. And I wanted to do the make the birds stand out. So they are colorful. And then the leaves were green. But when I finished that center, I had it up on the design wall behind me and I was so upset about it because I thought you look so boring because of the background. It was just like a beige. And then I spotted the yellow with black writing on it. And the uh -huh. minute I put that on the sides as a border, it changed everything. And I just want to talk about the outside border. That looks like wedges, which they are, but they're not pieced. Their wedges applicate onto a square, and then the square is cut into a circle and then applicate on. It's because I don't know how to write pattern for pieced blocks. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I make it simple by doing the applique. Well, I have to say uh, the border on, um, I got to see. What, oh, you can't, let me see if I can turn it. That border was applique on, I'm the yes. weatherman here. Yes, oh, it's this yeah. one. <laughs> That's applique, yes, right? It is. Um, yeah. yeah. So when did you start <laughs> making quilts? What brought you into the fold? Well, uh, when my daughter was born, and she's the she's twenty eight now, I I found a magazine in a quilt in a news agents, and I brought it home, and it had a quilt in it, and I thought, geez, I like that. I think I can do it. So those days we didn't know about rotary cutters or mats or anything, and I can't cut it out. And now when I think about it, it was very ambitious because it was an ocean waves oh. quilt. <laughs> anyway, I did it and I was told I had to hand quilt it and, and batting at that time was about three inches thick. I think you remember that. And I loved that. So I did a lot of pieced quilts and then I did a class with applique and I just fell in love with that. And then 2007 was the first quilt I designed. And I don't know if you know my story, but my husband was diagnosed with a terminal illness uh, about 15 years ago, or sorry, more than that, 18 years ago. And I was going through a tough time because my kids were still teenagers. So a girlfriend said, do something, you know, design a quilt. So um, I looked at the quilt from the Red Wagon books and I decided to do that. It had angels on it. But as soon as I did one angel, I decided I'm gonna design the angels myself. And there was one particular block I liked. So I did that. I took that one block and I made, and I started meditating then as well to help me to get through this. And I did a, uh, took one block and I did a quilt for use on my lap when I meditate, but I took it to a shop and she liked it and said, will you teach it? And, you know, <laughs> my head expanded because I was like, oh, here I am, the big new designer on the block until I realized I had to write the pattern. And, you know, writing pattern is the pits. But once I did that, it just felt like, to me, it was like all these quilts in here saying, we want to come out, we want to come out. And that was it. I've never done anyone else's quilt since then. So that's how it started. So I want to, okay, um, you said how you did the little one and the little 12 inch block. Let me see if I can pull back to this quilt. No, that one. Let me go to this one. Yeah, how that did, one's material. How did you manage to design that? The, the the little the, the four inch the six inch that made into 12 inches no the well, one that's on the I screen was, right now oh uh, this one by, by the time by the time i'd come here i really liked birds mm -hmm. so i draw everything on paper you know paper and pencil and then everything is rough and then i just um make it better you know refine mm -hmm. it and refine it so i use huge paper bits of paper and i just draw roughly what I think I want and then refine it. And that's the only way I can describe 
no, how that, I do it. Fine. I don't know. Yeah. So that was a that was a full size pattern, is what you're saying. Do you have a degree yeah. in art or something? Because that no, I don't. To, I don't. To, to, to <laughs> take a pencil and do that scares me. You know, I, I've spoken to Lilo about this, and I for a long time I've said I'm not an artist because I feel, and you know, when you're an artist, you can just sit somewhere and draw a scene, which I can't do. But I find that with the more I do draw, the better I get. And, you know, sometimes I look at a quilt and probably the one behind you and I look at it and I think, maybe I am an artist after all, <laughs> but I still, um, I'm not sure. Anyway, people do we tell vote, me do I am. We vote, do we vote that you're an artist, Irene blank? Yeah. You know, one thing for me in, in this whole journey of creating and art and all that, when I think of an artist, as you're talking about, I think of somebody that can render a beautiful watercolor or this or that. Yeah. And within our community, I've realized mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of room for play, a whole lot of room for whimsy, and it all falls under the category of art. That's, that's my little humble opinion. Yeah, I think I'm beginning to accept that, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just want to... Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I want to ask something that um, is off the wall. I'll give you a second to think about it. What has surprised you most about your quilting journey? You know, I have to say friends. Because when I, when I hit like, you know, 55, 60, I had this stupid notion in my head that I've got all the friends I need. I don't need to make any more. You know, that is so idiotic, I think, now. And uh, traveling the world, you know, I have such great friends in America because, I, and I go and I see them consistently. And to me, it's that community that that has just surprised me. And when I teach, you know, I'll, every now and again, there'll be somebody there that just I click with, which is something I never expected when I started teaching. And I just, I just never thought about friendships like that. So I have to say it's the friendships. It's the friends that I've made along the way that have just shocked me. For somebody who at my age thought, nah, no more friends, I've got enough. I have to tell you that throughout my quilting experience, it was always, you know, it was when I got my machine or buy the fabric or whatever. And now that I'm mature, um, it's the people. Yeah. It's the people. Yeah. It's such a beautiful yeah. community of people. And we all come in different size, shapes, colors, and the whole bit. But we are the same inside. Yeah. And I feel very strongly about that. Mm -hmm. Now, when, Irene, when this COVID stuff is over, are you, we're, you're doing things on Zoom, and that's great. And people, what is your email, please? It's my surname, blank, Irene at gmail.com. Okay, say it again. Blank, B-L-A-N-C-K, Irene, at gmail.com. Okay, and John will put this, I'm sure it's on the screen right now too. Um, when this is over, you are not opposed to getting on an airplane and come on over to different countries and stuff like that. Well, actually, I'm scheduled to teach at Baltimore on the Prairie in September 2022. And where's that? So uh, it's in Nebraska, and okay. I think I'm going to be paying you a visit before that, in case you're not aware of that. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. <laughs> we are going to get think. you. We're going to get you on the show. You know, the one thing I've learned in all of this is you've just got to be flexible, flexible, or you're going to yeah. go out of your mind. So yeah, yeah. Mm. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. We so appreciate. And I look forward to meeting you and, and hopefully giving you a hug at that point. <laughs> and thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to do this. You know, it's for me, it's kind of the biggest thing I've ever done in my career. So thank you. Well, thank you from us. And with that, I'm going to say adieu. And uh, we'll see you soon from my lips to God's ear. <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. Kathy, how are <laughs> <laughs> Okay, again. <laughs> <laughs>
you don't have to tell her that. She loves it. Kathy, can I call you Kathy? <laughs> okay, here. <laughs> I had just gotten done telling her, you know, if we screw up, it's no big deal. We just take a beat and go forward. And we had just been talking about Kathy Dowdy from um, Australia, material possessions. <laughs> oh, good grief. Um, one thing I... I one thing I want to say that she said that was so important is um, the design wall. You guys, if you don't have a design wall, figure it out because that that will change your entire quilting experience. You've got to be able to put things up and look at it. So I, I really like that she wove that in. And then the part about friendships. I, I honestly... The people I've met because of quilting, I would have never met you, Margo. I would have never met you, you know, Barbara, and the people on here that I know. And I know some of you, Noella, I'm going to meet you one day and we'll, and we'll hug and laugh about getting your stuff stuck at the border in Canada. I mean, the people are so kind and so gracious. So I, I, I agree with her 100%. She is lovely absolutely lovely and uh, I can't wait to meet her and hug her um, one of you asked Tracy uh, do you what do you do so the silk doesn't a little bit technical stuff here's the silk doesn't ravel on the edges well I do put fabric prep on it that's a very lightweight stabilizer and then I will often just like sew around the edge of the silk because yeah silk is naughty you can put a border on. You you don't have to put a border on. It's all up to you why we call it Make It Your Own. Now, something I wanted to tell you was that uh, I'm taking Joanne Sharp's year-long class again, and there's nothing as daunting as an empty page. You know, she'll give us instruction, and you're like going, like, you know, and I think the Make It Your Own applique is the same way. I mean, if you look at it, you guys, this little app, this uh, applique, stitchery, this started with one little circle, one little circle, and then it tells you what to do next. And so, so if you look at something, I have to start a new quilt uh, this weekend and I'm kind of freaking out, but I know as soon as I start putting stuff on the wall and all that, it will be fine. And by the way, it's for you guys. So, um, okay, all... There has been some confusion about the, the quiltshow.com BOM block of the month. The pattern is free if you are a subscribing member, 49 bucks a year for the whole enchilada, okay? There's been a little confusion about that and I wanna nip that in the bud. And speaking of the BOM, Barbara will be here Friday and uh, answer questions. Yes, it's a little overwhelming in the beginning, but hang in there just like when I look at a, a blank piece of fabric and I have to take a stitch on it it's a little overwhelming but she has not failed us or she is an excellent teacher and she is teaching Kathy's way Kathy's way Irene's way sorry Irene again and also her way so remember in in quilting there's 10,000 ways to do things which is what keeps us work so interesting John, come in here. I just said, yeah, and if you're new to quilting, BOM is block of the month. So, yes, Joanne, I agree. You just have to um, jump off, jump off the diving board and let's do it. So, oh, by the way, speaking of the BOM, and I forgot to load it up, Margo had the center done in the first 24 hours. <laughs> of course she did. <laughs> okay, so next week on Monday... I'm going to be doing more stitches, and then Craft Napa's around the corner, and guess who's going to be in my house on Wednesday? It's Joanne Sharp. So I said, Joanne, we're going to do a video together, it's live, so who knows what's going to happen there. Uh, I wish you um, fun on your BLM, on your Make It Your Own Stitch Along, and uh, light a candle for me starting with the new project. It is working with neutrals, and I had a ball um, sifting through 
my neutrals will put together some sort of kit to jumpstart people's neutrals because it's nothing you can it's nothing to easily acquire <laughs> so we're going to take care of that for you and we'll be doing that when we get back from hawaii so have a great weekend um enjoy barbara on friday she always has so much information it is ridiculous which is our our benefit so um let me just do this Enjoying the beautiful. I have a wonderful lady, the Houston show. Thank you, Dawn, for saying it is the best 49 bucks you'll ever spend. And honestly, I, I don't want to sit here, but um, it's I can be here because you guys are joining the quilt show. Uh, it, it, it can support this whole platform that we're able to do. Okay, we're good. I'm waiting for my girlfriend. We're taking off to a secret location to sew. Wendy Grand, to be exact. She has a show, too. Bye-bye.